Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. Follow us on Twitter at Boink Studios and check out our Facebook page where you can see all of our projects, past, present, and future. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's show. Step off. <laughs> Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and you are listening to Tom Clark's Main Event. This is episode number 51 of the podcast, and if you're joining us today for the very first time, we will bid you welcome. If you're coming back for a repeat visit, we say, hey, thanks for checking back in with us. And to all those involved, we will extend to you, as always, the customary laurel and a hearty handshake. Thanks for listening. Thanks for following. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for reading. And hey, thanks for always being there, Doc. If I sound a little tired, it's with good reason, because I'm a little tired. But the show must go on, right? Uh, so welcome back, guys. Uh, uh, we appreciate your business as always. This is Tom Clark's main event. I am your host, the aforementioned Tom Clark. How are we doing today? How is everyone out there in WWE land and beyond? Um, uh, I, I am doing fairly well, thank you very much. I've been writing, as always, um, doing the payback thing and... Um, uh, just just doing what we do here at Boing Studios, and yes, we are coming to you live, well, live right now, not live when you listen, because I, I have a show that's not live, but it's, I mean, you get it, you know what I mean. Uh, so, <laughs> we're coming to you from Boing Studios, is that better? Good, I hoped it would be. So we've got some stuff to talk about today. A lot of things have happened since the last time we hung out together. Um, some good stuff, some really bad stuff as well. We're going to cover a little bit of everything this time around. So let's just go ahead and get to it right now, shall we? This time, the main event is AJ Styles, The New Era, and Other News. And once again, my titles just keep getting lamer and lamer. I'm not sure if lamer is a word. But in context of this uh, particular show, it is, okay? So, uh, um, as we said before, good and bad since the last time we spoke. Good in terms of the new era of WWE. Some new stars uh, making the rounds and getting on TV, getting some serious airtime. Um, some bad in as much as uh, we've, uh, we've had some sadness be follows as pro wrestling fans and as pop culture fans. Um, and, and, you know, uh, I don't know if I want to start off with a down note, but I got some stuff in my mind in regards to the late China. Um, and I want to talk about this. This is the first time I've had an opportunity to talk about this on a show, because as I said before, this is, uh, this happens since the last time, uh, the main event was recorded. China, as you all know, uh, has passed away at the age of 46, I believe it was. And, um, you know, a lot's been said about it. I'm, I'm just going to tell you right up front that I don't do, like, cause of death kind of thing. I'm not one of those guys. I don't really care if I can be straight with you about it. I don't really care. All I know is that when, when someone passes, that's what I know. I don't really care about the how or why. It's, 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 it's not going to bring the person back. It's not going to make me feel any better. It's not going to make anyone grieving for that person feel any better. And it just all feels like tabloid journalism to me, running to the to the latest autopsy results and finding out how someone died, how someone left the planet. That just It just feels a bit weird, and I don't want anything to do with it if I'm being straight with you. But uh, um, let's talk about China. An amazing woman. I think we can all agree on that. She uh, had a major impact in the business. Um, I had been a wrestling fan for a long time, for a long time, before the Attitude Era ever came about. Uh, and I've said that on previous occasions, previous episodes of the show in particular, uh, that I'm a lifelong fan. I started out being a, a Jim Crockett fan. I'm still a Jim Crockett fan. 
by the way. Still a Jim Crockett guy. Um, NWA Mid Atlantic um, and and everything in between the the NWA territory back in the eighties was the best wrestling, for my opinion, uh, in the world. Uh, and I have fond memories of those days. But I was a pro wrestling fan long before the Attitude Era came about, and that's one of the reasons why I guess when people talk about the Attitude Era, they talk about it in terms of it being like this big monstrous event, this the best era of the business, and I have to respectfully disagree with that because I've just never seen it that way. And I have a lot of respect for the for the guys and gals that did their thing during that time, and and the Monday Night Wars were fun, yes. For any of you out there who watched the Monday Night Wars as they actually happened, it was some fun times. Great time to be a fan. The fans are the ones that benefited the most. I mean, a lot of guys had a lot of paydays. Let's just be honest about it. Guaranteed contracts out the wazoo in uh, WCW, of course. Creative control being bandied about like no one's business. Um but the the real winners winners excuse me were the fans and that's how it should be in any pro wrestling presentation the fans should be the ones getting the most out of the product as always and i've always believed that and always will um so i again i'd been a fan for a long time before that too attitude era came along but i can tell you this that the first time i saw china and i actually thought probably out loud when it happened wow this is this is something different this is not what i expected you know what i mean Internet at that time was still sort of um, being born. There was really no such thing as dirt sheets. There might have been some, uh, but not to the degree that there is now. There certainly wasn't any podcast happening. And, you know, I didn't really know anything about her until she hit. And then, of course, they as soon as they put her on TV, I started doing a little bit of research to find out, hey, who is who is this girl and where'd she come from and what she want to do with herself? And, uh, you know, of course, she was cautious the be in the beginning you could tell she was very careful and and she should have been anytime you're put on tv in a role where you've never been seen before obviously the first few times out you're going to be very cautious you're going to be playing uh your cards um uh close to the vest as it were and, and she did just that but you know the more we saw of her the more exposed she became and then eventually she uh she had plastic surgery down i believe it was she had the the breast enhancement and everything and and uh, her body changed, and you know uh, she became a major player. She was wrestling men, uh, the first and ever only intercontinental women's intercontinental champion, uh, which is which is something we'll probably never see happen again. Um, and you know they call her the ninth wonder of the world, um, and and with good reason. Um, uh, you know, and and I mean, in as much as Andre will never be repeated. Um, China will never be repeated. There will never be another China. There, there have been some muscular women to come along since then. There was that one in, in WCW that I think they passed, tried to pass her off, call her Asia, I think it was. Because like anything else in WCW, they were trying to capitalize on what WWE was doing. It was kind of like Marvel versus DC, except really, really pathetic. So it, nothing ever really worked out from that perspective. But a lot of people right now and and it's so, some of it's died down if I can be honest but a lot of people for a, about a week a good solid week there were just blasting WWE and talking about how and I read one headline I didn't read the column cuz it was utter nonsense but I read one headline that WWE drove her to her death okay here it is I can't imagine what was in her mind at the time of her death I also can't imagine what was in her mind before the time of her death. Um, In my opinion, those thoughts are left between you and your maker uh, when the time comes, as they will be for all of us. So, I mean, how are we to know and who are we to say what was and wasn't in her head, what she was and wasn't thinking about, what was and was not frustrating her or stressing her or disappointing her or whatever the case may be, or maybe haunting her, who knows. But I will say this, and I say this with all due respect to China's family and loved ones and fans. China was a grown woman, okay? And while I can't pretend to know what it was like to be in her shoes because I was never in her shoes, um, and I can't and won't judge her based upon the actions she took as an adult, the things she did with herself um, in other avenues, shall we say, um, I will tell you this, she was an adult who made her own choices, and um, I firmly believe that you choose to take, you know, prescription medication or drugs or you choose to do things with yourself. 
just as you choose to not do those things to yourself and with yourself. And, um, you know, again, I don't know what the cause of death is. To this day, I've not looked it up. I don't care. And if it pops up on a dirt sheet, I probably will not click on it. It's I don't really care. That's not the point. The point is that for anyone out there to blame that company for someone's death, um, and, and I'm not talking about Owen, all due respect. I'm talking about someone that was no longer even under the employee of the company. I think that's... I think it's an easy way out. I think it's hurtful. I think it's resentful. And we always like to think of WWE as the McMahon family. That it's just the bit, this big corporate conglomerate of the McMahon family and their kids and grandkids. Vince's grandkids. But let's not forget that a lot of good people work in that company. And I'm not defending them blindly. I'm not saying no one's at fault here. And perhaps there's not on some level some sort of culpability in terms of you know, do they? did she reach out for help? Did they not give it to her? I don't know the story. I don't have any idea what the story is. I'm not even going to investigate, okay? But, you know, again, a lot of good people work in that company. A lot of good people, I'm sure, that loved her and wanted to see her do well, wanted to see her be okay, but things did not work out. Um, and for me to sit here as a writer, as a fan, as a human being, and vilify that company for someone else's passing, I just can't do that. And you know what? If you can, go with God. But I would strongly urge you to take more of a common sense approach to this and try to look at it in terms of, again, she was an adult. She made her own decisions. Were they bad decisions? Well, probably so. But we've all made bad decisions, yes? So you can't judge her on being human because we're all human. Find me one person that's not. uh, Then we'll talk. So, yes, she messed up. I know she messed up because we all do because she was human again. So um, I'm not going to get into all that stuff. Um, I will touch on this. Um, uh, Stone Cold made the comment on his podcast that it's a shame that she was not put in the Hall of Fame when it mattered. In other words, when she was alive. You have to see this from WWE's perspective. And if you can't because you love China so much, I understand. And I get that. But having said that, man, she made adult films. She had sex on tape for money. And that's not to make her sound like an evil person. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that for a living. Okay, I don't think of them as evil. That's just what they want to do with themselves in their life. Well, have at it. Okay, Perfectly fine by me. Um, But you have to understand that when you choose to go that path, you choose to go that route, that you're trying to get your foot into the Hall of Fame in a company that, that made you a star. Um, probably not going to happen. Uh, and she probably knew that. I don't know if she had, had, had believed it, that that wasn't the case. I don't know for sure. Like I said, I don't know because I wasn't in her head. And I'm still not now. So, um, but so before anyone starts, you know, firing away at that company, try to see it from their perspective. Um, could they have done more? Possibly. I don't know. It's hard for me to comment on that, but you know, just from a from a fan's perspective, from a writer, from an analyst perspective, I gotta tell you, man, I just I I see what what's happened and and when she passed away, and I'm like, you know what, it it became kind of a circus for a while, and it's a shame it did because her life in some aspects was enough of a circus, uh, and you know what, let her rest in peace. Um, we'll never forget what she did uh, in terms of what she accomplished in the business how she advanced women's wrestling far beyond what it had been to that point. I think that she deserves a lot of credit for that. Straight up a lot of credit for that. And uh, the memories I have of her, honestly, as what a lot of people remember about her is when she was with Eddie Guerrero in Storyline. Fun times. Mamacita, right? Fun times. Um, So uh, deepest condolences to her family, to her friends, to her fans. Um, She deserved more than a video package where you couldn't hear the crowd reaction and then went straight to commercial. i got to be honest with you. She deserved a lot more than that. Um, She didn't get it, and that's a shame. Um, Don't speak ill of the dead, and don't speak ill of someone who just passed. That's just, that's incredibly uncouth, and people deserve uh, to rest in peace. People deserve to, to not be remembered in such a negative connotation as a lot of people are choosing to do now. But, you know, again, it, it, it was a bad time, and you know, switching gears a little, this is not pro wrestling related, of course, but on the very same day that China passes, Prince passes. 
I got to tell you, you may not know this about me, and if you don't, you're about to get educated, but I grew up a major Prince fan, and I still am. Purple Rain had become part of the soundtrack of my life uh, to that point. It was um, such a huge time for me in my life, and, and I, I loved that soundtrack. I love that movie. To this day, that movie is a classic. Um, I just, I can't. I can't see myself never, you know, like not loving Prince, never feeling like, you know, I'm just, I'm not a fan or whatever it is. I mean, dude, it's, for my money, pound for pound, the best movie soundtrack in the history of cinema. And there's been a lot of great movie soundtracks out there. You guys know that. But um, uh, if given the opportunity to read about Prince a little bit more than you perhaps already have, please feel free to check out the Boink Studios website. Just TomClarkBR.Wix.com slash Boink, uh, where I recently published a column called Prince, uh, excuse me, called Purple Rain, Rebirth of the Cool, in which I talk about the movie, I talk about the soundtrack, and it's just all, you know, paying homage to uh, to the great one himself, to Prince. Um, terrible, terrible. 57 years old. A man, dude, 57 at one point kind of... Sounded old, but the older I get, the less and less 57 sounds old, if you know what I'm saying. Funny how things change, yes. But um, to imagine he's not here anymore, it's a terrible thing. Um, loved his music. I loved it. I just, I, I, I remember buying, you know, 1999. Uh, this was, you know, the song 1999 and Little Red Corvette. Um those songs in particular. Now, now, keep in mind, this was before they hit and like completely took over MTV. All right, I just heard them a couple of times and said, "God, who is this guy? I love this." So as soon as the songs became big, you know, I was like, "All right, well, fine." I was I was to the dance long before you guys got here, and then Purple Rain hit, and I'm like, "Dude, I'm a fan for life now." Right? So, uh, oh, good times, man. But um, I got memories about Purple Rain that. I could sit here and tell stories from here to the end of time. Uh, maybe we'll cover some of that on uh, the next episode of Tom and Kyle's Comedy Action Hour. Stay tuned for that. But uh, as far as this show goes, we're going to get back to the wrestling. I'm sorry, man. I had to talk a little bit about uh, China and Prince together there. That was, uh, was a must-do thing. So um, let's get on here with, with the theme of the show. Let's try to bring this thing back up a few notches. Let's talk some about AJ Styles. That's a good topic, right? AJ, um, I, I think after payback, we could all definitely say that AJ Styles is a rock solid WWE main event attraction. Um, for anyone that doesn't believe so, you're dead wrong. AJ proved once again at payback what we've known as fans for years that he can go with the best of them. He can get in the ring. He can have a five-star match with a total stranger, a guy he's never worked before. Now, we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Maybe they ran through the match for a good month before it happened. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But it felt natural. It felt organic. The pace of the match seemed very perfect. I mean, just everything about it seemed like it was just, you know, right on top. I mean, just... Worked out exactly the way it should have worked out. It was just, it was an entertaining match. It was a fun match. It was a good match. It was, th- this is what Roman Reigns needed. Roman Reigns has been needing an opponent like AJ Styles, and he finally got one. And if you think I've been writing a whole bunch about these two, well, then you're right, because I sure have. Uh, between Bleacher Report and Sports Key to Man, uh, the week leading up to Payback, yours truly published. Uh, uh, quite a few pieces. In fact, I just published another one. It's on the way to getting published, I should say. Um, it's going to be on Sports Keto about um, um, AJ Styles as bringing a new edge to Roman. And he is. Maybe, well, I said new, maybe poor choice of words. He, he's uh, reinvigorating uh, Roman in terms of bringing his edge back. Sound better? Because it's true, man. Because Roman is... Uh, you know, he, he's at his best when the governor's been taken off, when he can just operate of his own accord, when can, he can so, sort of just like rage against the machine and go out there and just, you know, slam guys around. And he needs to be a man of few words. We've discussed this before, and a lot of other people out there from Jim Ross to 
uh, to Stone Cold and other guys have made that very common. It's 100% true, man. He he needs to be a man of few words. He needs to just um, focus on the on what he does in the ring. Focus on letting his fist talk for him. Because AJ, AJ Styles is bringing out the best in Roman. Roman is um, a guy that's going to be on top of WWE for a long time to come. He's the one they want at the top. So no reason to fight it. No reason to get upset and mad over it as everyone always, always is. The hate against Roman is strong. It's real. You better believe that. It's not going away anytime soon, man. Believe that too. Um, but what's happening, what we're seeing right now, in my opinion, is Roman has gotten the best possible first challenger to the championship that he could possibly get. When when AJ won the top contender uh, match, no more contenders match the night after WrestleMania 32, I kind of scoffed a little because I thought, this is the same guy that just lost clean to Jericho last night, so why in the world would I buy this? And then suddenly the writer in me who follows this stuff and writes about this stuff you know, 24-7 suddenly woke up and said, hey, moron, AJ Styles is going to wrestle for the world title. The WWE world title, no less. Oh, my God. So any trepidation I may have had left very quickly, as it should have. Um, and, and, you know, excitement set in because, man, AJ in world title matches is a fun time. And if you don't believe me, just go watch Payback. By the way, you've watched Payback, right? If you haven't, my God. Tell you what, go put Payback on the network. Mute it so you can listen to me. I'll be the I'll be the soundtrack for it. Sound good? Sounds great. But uh, nah, dude. He, he, you know, again, they they're paired up perfectly. In my opinion, they really are. Um, I think that you're seeing what you're seeing now with this rivalry is you're seeing a guy that is everything Roman is not. Okay, he's a veteran. He's light on his feet. He's uh, acrobatic. I guess you could say he's a high flyer. He has a world of experience and a ton of main event experience under his belt. He's worked for more than one company. He's been in front of, you know, probably 20 people uh, of the 20,000 and higher now thanks to WrestleMania. Um, And he is by far one of the best talents in the history of the business. Now, let me ask you a question. Just think about whatever your chosen profession is, okay, whatever you are, doctor, lawyer, uh, you know, a bagger at the grocery store, whatever it is you're doing with yourself, imagine being called one of the best in the history of your profession. Dude, I can't even imagine that. That's some great stuff, man. As a writer, I can just hope that one day I'm remembered as, hey, man, he wrote some cool stuff. That's what I want, you know what I mean? But as far as someone ever thinking of me as one of the best of all time, dude, that's a that that's a major league compliment. That's not just a major league compliment, man. That's like that's beyond cool. That's I don't even have the words for that. You know what I mean? AJ Styles has been hearing this for years. He's been reading it for years. You better believe he reads it. Don't lie. Don't lie. These guys say they don't read their own press. You know a lot of them do. And a lot of them that do probably won't say anything because it's you know, they're, they're kind of uh, marking out for themselves, I suppose you could say. But, um, no, nah, man, I, I don't believe that for a second. But um, he hears it all the time, and, and what, as well he should, because he deserves every accolade that could ever be given to him, because he is one of the best of all time. Now, you're Roman Reigns. You are under fire, right? Because WWE has took you down this insane path. And expected you, I mean, they, they they tied rocks to his legs, threw him in, threw him overboard, told him to swim. I mean, what? I mean, you see what I'm saying? And Roman, to his credit, has done remarkably well for a guy in his position. But they needed, well, they wanted him at, at the top. And they wanted to fast track him to get there. And don't, uh, dude, a year, that's a fast track. I'm sorry. I don't care what anybody says. This wasn't pushing a guy to the Intercontinental title or the United States title. Not at all. This was pushing a guy to the the title, the championship in the company. That's a big deal, man. That's a very big deal. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, for anybody out there that's doubting him and doesn't believe he's working hard, I I choose to disagree with that because I think that Roman is putting forth 110%. I think you're getting the best of what he has at the moment. I don't know if you're getting the best of what he'll have five years from now. 
or even a year from now. But I believe you're certainly getting better than what you got a year ago. Because I think he's improving. I think he wants this. I think he's passionate about it. I think that anyone out there that's criticizing him is not paying attention, in my opinion. It's okay to hate him. It's okay to not like the comments he's made in the past about he wants to get rich and stuff like that. It's okay to hate all that. I didn't much care for it myself. But to sit there and, and tell me that he's not improved, that's just that's comical to me. That's I don't I don't see where someone would come up with that crap at. But you know, again, I think he is given hundred ten percent. I think he really is doing everything he can do at the moment to get over. Uh and it's not working. <laughs> Bottom line. But you're Roman, you're under fire. You're supposed to be the top baby face, yet you're booted out of the building every time you're there. So here comes one of the monster baby faces of all time, and that's AJ Styles. So AJ's been a good heel. He's a great baby face, in my opinion. Just me talking. You know, one of the best talents in the history of the business, as we said before. Um, arguably the best talent in your locker room right now. I mean, seriously, since Daniel retired. I mean, it could very well be pound for pound right now. AJ Styles is the best worker in that company. Best active worker in that company. I don't think that's a stretch at all, man. Okay, so you're Roman Reigns and you're told, here's the guy that's going to challenge for the, t- for the the title first. Now, what do you say to that? Do you say, what the, dude, dude, why? He's a baby face. You're trying to get me over as a baby face. What are you thinking? Hey, man, I was one of the first guys to say that too. Maybe the one of the first ones to point out that I had saw. It's like, isn't this going to defeat the purpose? Do you know what I mean? Isn't this just going to kind of hurt uh, Roman's situation and, and hurt WWE's cause altogether? Because it sure felt that way, man. It still feels that way to some extent. But I'm more on board with it now than I was before, if I'm being honest with you. And but that's because of payback. Because payback, I think, has shown everybody what AJ is capable of. We all knew he was capable of doing everything he did at, at payback and more. We all know that. I think, Again, if you're a fan, if you've been following AJ for any length of time, then you knew this already. But, you know, WWE's a different animal. It is. It's different than New Japan. It's different than TNA. It's different than Ring of Honor. It's different than anything else AJ's ever done. Okay, and that's the truth. Because getting over WWE is hard. It's it right. It's it's not easy, man. It's hard to get over in wrestling in general. You wonder why? Because fans are so jaded. They've seen everything. You know you have. Shut up. You you boo the you boo the faces and you cheer the heels. Don't even front. Every one of you do it. Every one of you do it. But uh, <laughs> I see you trying to hide in the corner. But um, yeah, you know it's it, it, it the 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 prospect of two baby faces working each other. It's something that happens that's going to be all the time. Doesn't mean it's a good idea, and it didn't mean it was a good idea for AJ versus Roman. I mean, honestly, I didn't see that. I mean, I was one of the guys that wrote, "Hey, dude, this is a mistake. They shouldn't be doing this." But you know what? Dude, it, it payback proved all of us wrong. Yes. It proved everyone wrong because it showed everyone out there that AJ fits with Roman. They fit like a glove, man. They do. If it were me, I'd have a best of three series. My only, my only um, um, uh, fear to that, of course, is that AJ cleanly loses all three matches. I think that would hurt him in short term. Not long term, but short term. Because, and here's why it wouldn't hurt, hurt him in short term is because, man, Everyone that Roman faces for the foreseeable future, he's beating until he faces John. And I'm going to tell you right now, if John Cena takes the belt off Roman Reigns, that company would have made a huge mistake. I'm serious, because you can have John on TV and don't need to be the champ. You can have John in high-profile matches, high-profile pay-per-view matches. You can have him semi-main event. You can have main event if you want to. You've done it before. WB did it before when Punk had the title, right? They did it all the time. You know, I mean, so don't tell me they won't or they can't. They they, they can and they will. <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. But no, man, it's it's the company's going to do whatever they want to uh, at that point. Uh, and, and that's they're doing that now. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, man, everyone in that company, as well as fans, other writers, other analysts out there, other guys older and younger than myself, all saw what we saw at Payback. And we saw a guy in Roman Reigns that is very capable of having an outstanding match. 
Because I got to be honest with you, man, there was a time when we sort of doubted that. We all did. Shut up, you did too. Don't even lie. Because he has a history of having matches that really aren't up to snuff all that much, yes? But then, you know, he steps to the ring against AJ and everything changes. It's no mystery why it changes, yes? It's no mystery at all because the best workers make their opponents look good. That's their goal. AJ's goal in that match was to make Roman look good. Not because he was told to. Not because that's WWE's infamous tagline, we must like make Roman look good. It's not it. He did it because that's what he does. That's what AJ Styles does. He makes his opponents look better than they could look with anyone else. And he knows if he can do that, then he makes himself look good by comparison. The match goes smoothly. The moves get traded evenly. The heat bounces back and forth the way it needs to. Okay, uh, and, and everything goes well. And that's what we saw at Payback. Now, good news for us. This is going to continue in Extreme Rules. Match number two between these two guys for the championship belt. Anything can happen. I don't see AJ winning the belt. Would I, would I like to be wrong? Yes. Would I like to see that belt around AJ's waist? You better believe it. Ah, right. IWGP. Uh, and TNA World Champion, and NWA World Champion, because he was NWA World Champion, right? And WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Wow. <laughs> That's quite the pedigree, yes. No pun intended. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But, dude, I don't see him winning it. I think that he is there, <sighs> much as you guys don't want to hear me say it, he's there to make Roman look good. He's there to bring Roman le- Roman's level up a notch. And, man, he certainly is. Can I ask you a question? How do you follow up, follow up AJ? Kevin Owens, maybe? Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns for World Heavyweight Championship. Be an entertaining feud for sure. Roman, or excuse me, Kevin can make fun of that dude six ways from Sunday. He could. Um, so maybe that would be next. But again, following up AJ will not be an easy task, man. It will not be an easy task. But this is good for AJ. This whole thing, this whole exposing him to the main event scene is good. Doesn't mean you got to put the strap on him. Doesn't mean you should put the strap on him. Okay. You put the belt on that, on that guy right now, you're going to hurt him, in my opinion. Because as much as fans love him, and they do, he does not have the, uh, the sting pop. You know what I'm saying? Where everybody's on their feet every time he comes. He could get that right now if he wanted to. He'd just walk out and paint in the suit in the in the jacket. As soon as his music hits, it hits the ramp, standing ovation. Right? But, you know, what needs to happen here in order for this thing to keep rolling? Glad you asked. Roman's edge needs to continue. He needs to keep having that hard edge. Roman needs to keep Going after AJ in terms of verbally, in terms of physically, he needs to throw caution to the wind. Now, you got to be careful because if you're WWE and you refuse to heal Roman out, and by the way, they do, in case you haven't noticed, they refuse to heal Roman out. Why? Because they're silly like that. So if the intention is not to heal him out, you got to be careful how much teeth he actually has against AJ. Because if he does too much, if he were to clip him on his back's turn one time, your whole fan base is going to be crying foul, and they're going to be crying heel turn. And if you don't want that, then you got to make it more of a diplomatic affair, as it were. You have to make it, you know, in with a handshake if you can. You got to make it where Ray J like he would, he was with the chair. I don't want to win like this. It's not how I want to win. I want to do this by myself. They're smart for doing that. How many of you guys out there think the Bullet Club's going to end up being Finn, Anderson, and Gallows? Because um, a lot of people thought it was AJ, Finn, and Gallows. I think we're all pretty much under the assumption that's not going to happen. I think they'll turn on AJ before they do anything else. I still think it's a possibility. And maybe I'm dead wrong because they've attacked the Usos since they came up with this idea. But I thought it was entirely a possibility that uh, Bullet Club was going to be at Roman Reigns' beck and call. How you feel about that? Roman running and well, Roman Roman running his own faction for the first time ever. Yes, the Bullet Club. And then the people start talking about the Bullet Club versus the Shield. And I wrote that column too, and I'm like, nah, not a good idea, because Seth Rollins was the number one heel in the company. When he comes back, he should continue to be the number one heel in the company, straight up. Uh, and by the way, if you're curious about what I've written about Seth lately. All you have to do is go to my website, tomclarkbr.wix.com slash blog, in a piece published on May 5th called 
What about Seth Rollins? Thank you very much. As you guys know, I am an attention addict. I crave it. I crave it. Sometimes I sit around and scratch my neck uh, and talk to Joe Rogan. That's a Chappelle show. Um, I referenced there if you didn't catch that. But no, the, the column I wrote about Seth's pretty straightforward. What about Seth Rollins? Everybody's talking about John Cena coming back on May 3rd. Was it May... Refresh my memory here. It's a Memorial Day. May 30th. Thank you very much, computer. Um, but come back on May 30th, the, Memor- the Memorial Day edition of the Monday Night Raw. Uh, and it's going to be, of course, uh, John Cena coming back to the fold. Now, John Cena coming back. Um, um, I've written about this. Going to write about it some more. WWE's new era is a real thing. It's not just a hype. It's not just, you know, a clever tagline to sell payback or any event after that point. It's a real thing, man. Um, so how does John Cena fit in? Because it appears as though the company's moving on. It doesn't mean they're going to move on and, and fire him. Don't be silly. It also doesn't mean they're going to move on and put him on the shelf or send him home. He's John Cena. He makes a ton of money for that company. His earning power is not ended. But what I am saying to you right now is that eventually, he's going to have to start stepping aside. He probably doesn't want to do it. I'm sure Flair does, didn't want to do it. I'm sure Hogan, well, I know Hogan didn't want to do it, and he left. So, <laughs> no top guy wants to move aside, but what they tend to forget was that top guys moved aside for them. By hook or by crook whether out of demand or necessity or choice, whatever you want to call it, they were given opportunities where established guys were were at uh, and then chose to walk away or were forced to walk away. So think about that for a second. But John's going to be no different, man. John is eventually going to be stepping aside. I'm not saying it's going to be right now. I'm not saying it's going to be when Seth comes back. I'm not saying it's going to be when Brock comes back, but John is eventually going to start moving aside because that company has a world of talent, a, a locker room full of talent, an NXT locker room full of talent. I mean, so many new faces, established stars, homegrown talents at NXT, and all the above, man. They this This whole thing about the new era, it's 100% true, and, and it works. It's such a great... Great idea for a marketing campaign. Marketed payback is the first pay-per-view of the new era of WWE. What a great tagline that is. My God, I wish I thought of it. But, I, you know, I had written several times before. It seemed like a new day was dawning in WWE, and it certainly has. Um, a lot of new faces. Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. I'm bouncing around a half to. It's my style, yo. It's how I roll. Sami versus Kevin. Dude. A match at pay per view, and I called this um, uh, last week on another podcast, um, in which I stated that I was looking for, uh, you know, uh, Buzz Sawyer versus Tommy Rich. You know, uh, I was looking for that kind of feud, where it was two guys that at one time, you know, were were great friends, but they now they're bitter enemies. They just want to absolutely kill each other. Um, and that, to me, makes for a more compelling story, a much more compelling feud than the straightforward, well, I don't like him, and I'm just I'm trying to beat him. This has history. This has a connection to it. This is Sammy and Kevin doing their thing in the ring. Um, imagine those two guys being on the same page, and they were many times before, but, you know, great friends, better enemies, Yes. Um, you got to say that at this point. It's like Triple H versus Shawn Michaels. I mean, you really got to say that. So, you know, um, they again, their match at Payback was top-notch. I loved every second of it. They're going to have another one, I'm sure. Um, Extreme Rules, 100%. I'm pretty, pretty sure 100%. This time, the Intercontinental Championship is probably going to be on the line in, in some great big uh, ladder match or something to that effect. But, um, you know, Kevin looks good. Kevin looks good. Sammy looks great. I mean, it's just these guys together are going to have some great matches. We've already seen a taste. We're going to get a whole lot more Extreme Rules than luck. And 
you know, we're going to keep rolling on from there. But, you know, I've, I've criticized Ken in the past about his physical appearance, and I still do that. And the biggest reason why I do that is because I don't know what the company's telling him, but there's no way they're telling they're not telling him to hit a gym. I don't believe that, or at least encouraging him to go to the gym. Uh, I'm not saying he's not going, but he's not any smaller than he was before. I look at it in other terms. Bray Wyatt, um at one point was in pretty rough shape in my opinion and I'm a big guy so it's nothing personal but Bray has muscled up since then he's lost a lot of that gut and he looks great okay but you know it's that kind of thing you got to keep in mind man uh that you know there's there're going to be different types of bodies body types different types of body types and different styles and and different people to suit different fans and whatnot so yes, I've given him a hard time over that because my thing is you're in that company. You're, you've got access to a gym, I'm sure, all the time. They got you covered, so why aren't you going? See what I'm saying? But uh, not the end of the world for me because he, what he lacks for in his physical presence, he more than makes up for in his work ethic and his character, which I think are just hands down two of the best combinations in that company right now, if I'm being honest with you. But uh, Kevin's so good. Kevin versus Brock Lesnar. I mean, give it a year at WrestleMania. That's my prediction. Kevin Owens versus Brock Lesnar. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, man. I don't have a clue. But, you know, um, I think it would make for a very interesting match. I think that Brock would have more of a fight than he had with Ambrose. And they kind of put over the fact with he and Ambrose that um, uh, that Ambrose sort of was going to have to hit him with a truck in order to beat him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That he had to have weapons. There's no way he could match up. But... I don't know if that the same could be said with Kevin. Because, I mean, physically, Brock's a beast. You can't... You know, there's only certain guys that are his size or bigger right now. Uh, especially in that company. Because they've slimmed down in a lot of regard. Because they're uh, they're not the land of the Giants as they were before. That kind of thing. But uh, I think he's got potential. I think he's got the whole world ahead of him. And he's had a pretty good career so far. But, man, WWE... Like I said before, it's a different animal, it's a different monster, and, and he's a different kind of worker for a new era. And he fits in perfect what WWE's doing now. It's that unexpected, the unassuming body type, it's something different, it's a different flavor for everybody out there. It's the kind of mix, the eclectic mix of stars that I would have hoped for for years from this company. But unfortunately for us, they only seem to come on board during certain times with that sort of mentality, which is odd. Um, kind of off on a, on a, on a weird topic right now, Mick Foley's daughter, Noel, Noel, excuse me if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but, uh, his daughter, um, supposedly is going to train to be a wrestler. The first thing a lot of people said was, uh, kill me now. And the reason for that is because she's kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? She's pretty girl. But she sounds weird, like her voice is a little messed up, and she's she gets on people's nerves on Twitter quite a bit. You know, they they parade her around and stuff, and you're like, God, stop! You're knocking me out here. I'm dying. So that kind of thing has been happening for a while. But what I think people aren't thinking about, and this is the thing people need to think about, is what will happen when and if she does fully debut as a women's wrestler in WWE. The reason I say that is because there is the possibility of having a great character, a character that exists right now, actually, right under your noses, right under the nose of everyone in WWE. Because if you think that she can't pull this off, okay, I'll put it this way. I hope she can pull this off. I don't know if she can or not. I don't know if she can pull it off, but I think if anyone can, she can. I think she's got the background to do it. Harley Quinn. Think about that. Let that sink in for a second, man. Think about it. Who else would be able would be that psychotic except mankind's daughter? Dude, the possibilities that are endless there, man. She could be to the women's division what Foley was the men's division. Where he was that, you know, that wild, that crazy, that, you know, self destructive and uh, and uh, he assaults you. Uh, and he just kind of tears you apart, and he, he risks life and limb. But more importantly, all of that, the physical aspect of it is from a mental aspect, because, you know, mankind was very twisted. 
Uh, he was disturbed. Remember all those promos he cut when he first came to the Beast Mankind? Uh, he was, he, again, disturbed. He was twisted. He had demons in his head, man. And he was, you know, um, he was coming from the darkness. And next thing you know, um, here's a guy called Dude Love. And he's wearing tie-dye. And he's having mercy. And he's dancing with girls in the ring wearing ridiculous tie-dye. Then after that, next thing you know, here it comes, well, Cactus Jack is back. Bang, bang. And then Mick Foley's a regular guy at home as a dad raising his kids. And you combine all of that together and very easily explain a Harley Quinn-esque uh, type of character for Foley's daughter if and when she were to get the business. So if anyone out there is listening, I'm available to book. <laughs> Just give me a call. <laughs> Hit me on Twitter. Give me the digits. I'll call you. We'll do lunch. So, but I think that thing has a monster potential. Now, whether or not she's going to take to it and do well, who knows? This thing could be a year away from ever even becoming a reality, but I'm just thinking out loud right now. So, which is something I tend to do on the show quite a bit, by the way. But that's cool. That's that's how we roll, man. We just talk, right? I just hit record and we just stop talking, man, because that's what it's all about. I'm not going to lie to you. What else is going on at WWE? Uh, a truly scary moment for Enzo Amore uh, at Payback. We all saw it. The head bounced off the rope uh, and then bounced off the, the, the mat. Um, heard he's doing great, that he's got to pass his, pass his impact test because he has a concussion before he can come back to the ring. Uh, smart thing on WWE's part. They need to really keep enforcing that because God knows how many guys are working matches right now with a concussion. But they've not told anybody. You know what I'm saying? They don't lose their spot. And that's happened uh, for years in the in the business, man. You see it in every company that's ever been involved with professional wrestling. Guys don't want to lose their spot. They don't want to lose their push, as it were. They don't want to lose their main event status. They don't want to lose face time because, you know, um, out of sight, out of mind. And most guys are terrified of being out of sight, out of mind because when you forget who someone is, then you won't care when they come back if they're that easily forgettable. And on top of that, if you don't like them much, or, or and, and that, that translates to what happens after their return, then you don't want to see them in the main event, which means every time they're in the main event, you're not going to care. The promoter's going to hear that. Next thing you know, that guy's not going to be in the main event anymore. So it happens. But um, all the best to Enzo. Glad he's healthy. Hope he gets back really soon because Enzo and Big Cass uh, they were becoming the hottest act in WWE next to New Day. Uh, New Day are pretty, pretty darn hot, yes. But uh, yeah, possibility of those two things, those two guys doing very big things in the company. I hope they do because they've worked extremely hard to get where they are. They've paid their dues. Uh, they're smart guys, by the way. Uh, I think they're an asset to that company. They're an asset to that company, and I think they're entertaining, and I think that fans are, love them. Um, and that's how it is. And again, I hope that everything works out great for Enzo. And those two guys are back to back to top form shortly, because that's what they should be. But dude, as we said before, like the new era of WWE, there's a lot of reasons to be excited. Cesaro is finally getting something. Is that fun? <laughs> Don't know how I feel about the whole James Bond tearaway suit, like he's a male stripper. And now coming to the stage, Cesaro. I don't know if that's how they sound in a men's strip club because I've only ever been to a strip club once and it was of the female variety and there was no goofy announcer. And so at the end of the night, I felt robbed. I'm like, where's the terrible announcer? You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> I digress. But, um, uh, you know, Cesaro's getting something, finally. Uh, they're trying to push Miz into becoming a top heel, one of the top heels. And I can't argue. Dude's been there for a long time. I think he's done just about everything he can. He, he's kind of looking like, you know, a, 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 a jerk jock right now with that haircut he's got. He's kind of, I don't know what's happening with him. But, uh, <laughs> hey, man, don't hold a, hair, a guy's haircut against him, all right? But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a new day, man. Different things are happening right now. Apollo Cruz. Doing his thing, yo. Looking good in the process. Athletic, big man. A lot of great stuff happening for them right now. It's, got, it's an exciting time to be a WWE fan. We've talked about that before, but it's the truth, man. 
exciting time to be a WWE fan. This new era stuff, this is some real life stuff. And if for anybody out there who's lamenting the death of John Cena in terms of being the top guy, number one, don't panic. Your boy's coming back soon. He's not going to get that spot up until they take it from him. Uh, right? I wouldn't either. Duh, if you say you would, you're lying. Because there's nothing like being the top guy in WWE. Ask anybody that's done it, they'll tell you. Right? So, you know, my guess is that John's one of those guys that doesn't want to give it up. I wouldn't want to give, again, I wouldn't want to give it up either if I was him. But the fact of the matter is that eventually things are going to change. He's going to go on his way. And he might still be affiliated with the company. Well, there'll be no mind about it. He will still be affiliated with the company. He still looks amazing. Uh, he's still a funny guy. 2015 was a was a great year for him. Might have been one of his best of all time in terms of his match matches, his match quality, actually, the United States title and all that. Um, but make no mistake about it, things are changing. Uh, he will change eventually in terms of where his placement is. His character ain't changing for n- nobody, not you or nobody. <laughs> it's the truth, man. Shut up. You know I'm right. But, uh, yeah, dude, he's, I mean, eventually time's going to come when WWE's going to have to start thinking about, okay, they've got Roman here, Dean's doing pretty well, Sarah's coming up, we got AJ, like we could bring Finn in. I can just imagine the brainstorm sessions. At the end of the day, you need a guy that can draw money. And I feel like they're they're attempting to get away from the from the top guy idea. And I think it's only a temporary thing. I think that they will find their next John Cena, not in terms of, him as a person or whatever, but him in terms of being committed, of being a guy that can have that just has that spark. John has a spark. Love him or hate him, John has a spark. Not just with kids either. He's got a spark with fans. He does. Um, you can hate his guts, but you can't deny he's got it. He's got that connection. So until WB can find someone that everybody and their brother and their kids want to pay to see, then John's not going to go anywhere because you need a top guy to sell tickets. That's why they're not doing that right now, man. That's why AJ's not being elevated as a top guy. Uh, that's why they're not pushing hard to get Roman over as a baby face. Uh, because they're saving the spot till John gets back. So right now, all they're doing uh, is is trying to fill that position with their locker room full of guys who are either not over or who are who could be over if they had the right opponents, put it that way. Um, so, yeah, a lot of stuff going on right now. Uh, WWE, as we said before, um, a lot of things happening. Um, Ryback. <laughs> I got to talk for a minute or two before we take this thing home by Ryback. He's, he, he might be done. I'm not sure. He said things online recently that probably didn't help us cause much, but he's calling for equal pay for the stars on the card. Now I will say this. That sounds great until you're the guy that's been doing this for 10 years. Here comes the guy that's done it for 10 minutes. He's going to get paid the same thing as you. Wouldn't that sting? I don't think he's thinking about that kind of stuff. Now, you're risking your life in a pro wrestling ring. Uh, you know, from Brock Lesnar to Shawn Michaels, all the way down, I mean, I mean to Roman, to, you know, to the gobbledygooker. <laughs> <laughs> trying to forget that, right? Yeah, well, me too. But everyone's putting their life on the line every time they step through the rope. So what would it matter if you worked a five-minute match or a 50-minute match? Well, it wouldn't technically, I don't suppose. But tell that to, to the guys in the locker room. You don't want your your talent to become unhappy because they got a lot of talent right now. And I'm not saying you got to placate them and you got to, you know, bow down and, and you know, uh, fulfill their every desire. I'm not saying that, but at the same time, you know, again, locker room full of talent. Guys just want their shot, want a fair shake, and you're going to tell them no. You're going to pay the dude next to him that just got here. You've been here for six months. The guy next to him just got here. You're going to pay him the same thing. He's getting paid. When they find that stuff out, it's going to be bad news for everybody. So that's really what you're talking about. So um, right back wants that kind of thing. Now, uh, I'll be honest with you. I have no idea what Ryback situation is. I was in the business myself. And I'd seen the money discussion slash argument come and go. But you got to remember, my level was, you know, we were drawing 60 fans. Uh, the most I was in front of at that time was 400 people. And they had our biggest show was 400 people. 
So I can't pretend to know everything in Ryback's head, but I've seen this kind of thing before. And it's not easy to rectify. I mean, if WWE's not willing, and man, he's made it kind of clear that if he doesn't get what he wants, he's going to be on his way. I think that he's painting himself into a corner. And I think that the experiment of getting him over is the next big thing. That'd be botched that one. And I hate that word. Did I just use that word out loud? Oh my God, I know it's late now, man. Kill me now. <laughs> but that'd be screwed up. The, that's a better word. Screwed up the opportunity um, that they had there. And it's it's a shame with Ryback because he could have been something big. And now it really feels like that it's dead man walking for right back. So I don't know if that's true or not, man. We'll have to see. But uh, again, missed opportunities and no one wants to see that at all. So, how are you thinking about it? It's been an hour. Can you believe that? We're already done. I do an hour, man. I'm an hour and I'm out. You know what I'm saying? They call me Tom. I'm an hour and I'm out. Clark. That They don't really call me that. But, uh... <laughs> But, uh, you know, we we touched on the new era just a little bit and talked about some other things. What are you thinking right now? What's your opinion on what we talked about today? Because it's time to start plugging the websites. Don't click stop now. Just hear me out. And then later on, if you don't like it, you can click stop the next time early if you want to. Okay? Work for you? Good. So here's where you can find us. First of all, you can find Boing Studios on the Facebook Go to the Facebook, type in Boing Studios, click the like button, check out our posts, all the links there to the different posts that I write. Please go check out my stuff. So uh, you can also find us on Twitter at Boing Studios. Boing Studios, of course, is a production company owned by myself and great friend Kyle Smith. Um, the Boing Studios website, tomcartbr.wix.com slash boink. All the material produced on that site is original material. Written by yours truly. All the illustrations are original illustrations produced by Kyle Smith himself. The music that you hear on this show, as well as Tom and Kyle's Comedy Action Hour, is provided by Philip Fender. Again, original material. All produced under the Boink Studios umbrella. We're just having a blast entertaining, yo. It's who we are. It's what we do, baby. It's what we do. So go check us out. Boink Studios, man. We hope you like our stuff. Give us some feedback. Tell us what you think. You can follow me on Twitter at TomClarkBR. Um, I've got a Facebook page as well. I'm kind of boring. All I got is a bunch of links and weird videos and stuff that I kind of like, but it's whatever. But uh, uh, TomClarkBR.Wix.com slash blog is my own website. You can find me there. You can, of course, find me on the Bleacher Report. I've been there for six years strong. Happy with that. Couldn't be happier. Great bunch of guys. Great bunch of people to work with. I'm having a blast. I'm also, once again, on Sports Kita, and as well as the Highly Esteemed Camel Clutch blog. And, uh, dude, is that it? Oh, yeah, if you want to email me, tomclarkbr at yahoo.com. Now, is that it? Pretty sure that's it. Thanks for listening to the ramblings of a starving pro wrestling writer because that's what I am, baby. It's what I'm doing. But it's fun, right? <laughs> this has been a, uh, episode number 51 of the podcast. Again, thank you so much for listening. Thanks for your support as always. We're going to be back with episode number 52 real soon. So please come on back for the main event, man, because it's been a blast having you. Love to have you again. We always appreciate your business as always. And we will see you next time on Tom Clark's Main Events.